front. And I'm talking on the inside. I was walking around. I was a party animal, but you know what? In, on the inside of my heart, I was dead. There was no spiritual walk trusting in him. My friend, it is, very, it is crucial that you're born again. Because if you're not born again, you're not going to make it to heaven. Friend. I don't know, your pastor might have lied to you. Your uh, friends may have lied to you. Your mom or dad may have lied to you and said, you know what, it's just about being a good person. Just be a good Buddhist. Just be a good Mormon. Just be a good Jehovah Witness and you'll get to heaven. Friend, that's a lie from the devil. That won't get you to heaven, but that will sure guarantee you a place in hell. Why? Why do you say that, preacher? Because, friend, there's only one way to heaven, and that's through trusting in Jesus Christ, following Him, believing Him, obeying Him. There's only one way. There's one mediator between God and man, and His name is Jesus Christ. One go between. Jesus took the wrath of God between that the Father was going to pour out on you and me, and if we trust in Christ, that wrath is no longer on us. It was on His Son, Jesus. Now we have the righteousness of Christ Jesus that He gives us through the Holy Spirit. My friend, that's a good transaction. That's the best deal anyone could be given. Is a deal of salvation that Jesus Christ gives us. Not anything that we can do to earn it, but simply receiving it. Simply obeying the gospel call. And saying, you know what, God, I'm a sinner. Save me. Make me new. That's it. A child can do this, friend. If you're a child, you can receive the message of the cross. But my friend, it takes humility to become a child again. Many people, I'm a man, you know? Yeah, you're a man that's headed to hell. Or you're a woman that's headed to hell without Christ. Humility is what is, what is needed. You need to humble yourself to receive the grace of God. Not puff yourself out and say, I know everything. My friend, I've come to know since 13 years of following Christ that I don't know anything except Christ and Him crucified, the power of God. And I don't want to know anything else. Because knowledge puffs up, but it's the love of God that builds up, friend. And it's the love of God that will build you up in your life. It'll keep you from being puffed up with pride and arrogance, thinking that you know everything, thinking that you have it all figured out. My friends, it is those that are in hell today that were puffed up in pride thinking that they had it all together but yet they were poor thinking that they were rich but they were poor thinking that they had everything and, but, and they had need of nothing but they had nothing when it came right down to it because they didn't have Christ they didn't, they didn't trust in Him my friend if you don't have Christ friend you truly are poor but Jesus said blessed are the poor in spirit blessed are those that, that are low Blessed are those that are meek. Blessed are those that are that, that seek after righteousness, for they will be filled. My friend, that is what we're to seek after. That is what we're to be like. I thank God that He gives grace to, to those that will just humble themselves, because I know I need to humble myself daily. Paul said that he had to die daily. He had to suffer for Christ. He had to go through affliction. He had to go through trials. He had, to, he had to be crucified to his desires and what he wanted. Friend, as a Christian, it's not doing what you want. It's doing what God wants. It's not about you. It's about him. John the Baptist says, I must decrease and Jesus must increase. My friend, if that's not your life, then it should be. If that's not my life, it should be. God has called us not to live for ourselves, but to live unto him. For he loved us and gave himself for us. God bless you as well. And uh, we just want to tell you Happy New Year tonight. But the reason for every season, the reason for the new year, the reason why you're still walking around today is because God has given you breath. He, he has created you. He has given you breath tonight that you can walk around. So glorify him. Honor him with your life. Amen. Give your life to him. He is do it. He is worthy of all the glory and the honor from your life. And the only way you're going to begin to glorify Him, friend, is to surrender, to give up, to realize that you're, you're a sinner, you're lost. 
you're lost in the, the things and the cares of this world, you're lost in your sins and trespasses. But the grace of God is there, friend. The mercy of God is there. Today, as He restored your soul. Friend, today, Jesus is going to restore you today, man. He can restore the joy of your salvation. He is the one that you're looking for, friend. He is the one that can fill the void in your life and your heart. Jesus is the one, friend. It's not about a religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ. He can restore your, your, your soul. He can restore you to righteousness. I saw in Psalm, uh, I believe it's 51, restoring to me the joy of my salvation. So many folks at one point in their life in this town, have made a, they made a commitment for Christ as a young person. Maybe they used to walk with them. They used to truly love the Lord. But they've fallen from grace. They've fallen from that point. And now they're, they're, they're walking in sin and iniquity. They've been... Some people have actually gotten engulfed in sin and they can't get free. They're addicted to it. And friend, today Jesus Christ can restore you. He can, the resurrection power of Christ, the same power of God that rose Jesus from the dead can dwell in you and can change your heart and change your life. The same power of God, friend, that rose Jesus from the dead. That's the same power of God that dwells in the believer. And when you truly walk with Him, it's not all about some religion. It's not about getting dunked in water. It's not about even just tithing your money. It's good to give, but that doesn't save you, friend. It's good to get baptized, but that doesn't save you, friend. It's, it's the power of God in your life that is the one who restores you. It's the power of God. It's the power of the gospel of Christ that truly changes and transforms the person's life. Person today, Jesus loved you. He died on the cross for you. He desires you. When he was on that cross, he was thinking about you and me. Doesn't matter what color of skin you are, doesn't matter what sin you do. Jesus died on the cross for you. You're not so far gone that Jesus can't change your heart, change your life, and deliver you from sin. You're not so far gone that God can restore to you the joy of salvation. At one point in time, maybe you had joy in the Lord, but you've substituted that for a bottle. You've, you've replaced the Spirit of God to drink spirits because you have no peace in your life. You try to drown out your sorrows. You try to drown out the stress that's in your life. And what you really need is Christ. What you really need is Jesus. What you really need is the presence of God to restore you. Restore your heart. Restore the joy that used to be in your life, friend. It's, today's the day that you get it right with Him. Today is the day to truly turn your heart back to Christ. Enough playing games with Him. He knows your heart. He knows what, what you're thinking about. He knows the sin that you've contemplated and that you're doing. Friend, today that's why it's, it's time to confess Him as Lord. It's time to get on your knee and say, Lord, forgive me for the sin that's in my life. Father God, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Forgive me of my sin, Father. Cleanse me. And friend, today when you extend that kind of prayer to Him, that's a faith prayer. That's a prayer that you're confessing and forsaking your sins where Christ can do something with that. But so many folks today feel that they deserve heaven. They feel that they deserve the good things in life. They feel that they deserve to get into heaven by their own good works. You don't deserve that. Friend, today that the Bible says it's by grace are you saved through faith. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you've sinned and fall short of His glory, what do you deserve? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You deserve death, friend. That's what you deserve. You don't deserve life. You don't deserve heaven. Most people that die don't go to heaven. I don't know where the preachers get off lying to you that Johnny was a good man. Johnny will be in heaven waiting on you. Friend, today, if Johnny was a sinner, then Johnny's not waiting for you in heaven. He's waiting for you in hell. And Jesus said that broad is the road that, is, that leads to destruction. In other words, most people that die go to hell. Chances are highly likely if you had a family member, family member that died recently, uh, they're not in heaven, that they're in hell. I had uh, a any longer. You don't have to be a homosexual. 
You don't have to, to be a murderer. You don't have to be a thief. You don't have to be a liar. Through Jesus Christ, there is a way out. There is a way of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And my friend, that's the only way. You can go to a Mormon church, you're not going to be set free from your sin. You can go to a, you can be a Jehovah Witness, you can be a Roman Catholic. You're not going to be set free, friend. You're going to be more bound by demons. You're going to be more, you're going to be religious. My friend, if, you, if you're a Mormon, you're, you're a religious sinner. That's what you are. If you're a Jehovah Witness, you're a religious sinner. If you're a good Baptist or Presbyterian, you're just a denominational Christian, quote unquote, but you don't have a relationship with God, you're just a religious sinner, friend. You're not on your way to heaven, you're on your way to hell. But God wants to change that destiny tonight. He wants to change the way you are, the way you think. My friend, if you trust in Christ, the good news that we're offering you tonight, His death, His burial, His resurrection, on, you know, His death on the cross, that's the thing that can change you. The only thing. Trusting in what Christ did, shedding His blood on the cross, He was a sacrifice for your sin, for my sin, that we've committed throughout our entire lives. And yet people want to say that, oh, I, I hope my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds, but how many bad deeds do you have over your good deeds in your life? That's what it should make us all pause. Because surely we've committed more bad deeds in our life than good. So into a relationship with Him or into oh, heaven exactly. is by trusting in what He's already done. Yeah, that's what we did. It's not by anything that you and I can do. We can, we can be perfect from this day on and never sin again. We'd still not be right with God. Because there's only one way to the Father, and that's through a relationship with Christ Jesus. Your unbelief, my unbelief will keep us from heaven. It'll keep us from being right with Jesus. The only way is Jesus Christ. Return to Him tonight. Place your faith in Him. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. Don't trust Him. Don't call on Him. And the opposite is true. You'll find yourself in despair, depression, darkness, and one day if you die without Christ, you'll find yourself in hell. Because, my friend, that's the only place for people that love their sin is, is hell. Well, a lot of times we preach, what in hell are you looking for? What hell do you want? Because most people want the things of hell, but they don't want the things of God. So you're going to find yourself in hell because that's what you are. That's what you love. That's your, your makeup. But Jesus wants to make you a new person through the grace of God. He wants to make you a new creation if you'll just trust in Him. Jesus said, unless you're a new person in Christ Jesus, unless you're born again, you won't enter the kingdom of heaven, friend. I know I sound like a parrot, and I repeat the same thing over and over again. And I do that because it's the truth. And the truth is the only thing that can set you free. I'm not out here to tell you something that you that maybe maybe you didn't know it. A lot of people these days, they probably didn't know it. Or maybe you have heard it time and time again. But yet it never clicked. It never clicked in your mind or your heart. I know for me, I heard the gospel as a kid time and time again, but it never clicked in my heart. There was nothing that resounded in my heart that, you know what, this is the truth. And the, the, this pastor up here on this pulpit, he's, he's preaching truth. He's preaching a message of truth. And that truth is to make me different, to make me new. My friend, a lot of times you have heard it so many times, the good news of Christ, but it hasn't clicked in your heart and your mind. Today's the day that it should click. Today's the day, the day that you should uh, turn to Christ which is called repentance, turning from dead works and having faith towards God. Today's the day to, to let Christ into your life, to accept Him, to make Him the Lord of your life. I hope He did, but I don't, I don't really think so. Scripture says that more than likely He would not have, have repented, that more than likely he, he drew His last breath and woke up to the next breath in hell. And friend, today that's your, that, that's your demise until, unless you repent, John the Baptist said, unless you repent, you will likewise perish. It's time today to repent, to turn from sin, to turn from your unrighteous ways and turn to God. It's time to truly make it right with Him, friends. Enough playing games with God. He's not playing games anymore. The Bible says that as it was in the days of Noah, It'll be the same way when the coming of the Son of Man will, will be here. And friend, today it's a lot like the days of Noah today where people are, are out partying and having fun. And friend, uh, Noah preached for over a hundred years.
repentance and the only people that got saved were his own family. Why was that? Well, because Noah was a man of righteousness. Noah wasn't a hypocrite. His, his kids could see that he truly walked the talk. What about you, friend? Do your kids see that you truly walk the talk? You claim to say praise the Lord out of one side of your mouth, but then, then you have all kinds of bitterness and cursing out of the other. You're not a Christian. You're not a believer. You're a faker, poser, and hypocrite. That's what you are, friend. If you truly love the Lord, you, you truly surrender your life to Jesus, your speech pattern changes. And all those curse words and all that bitterness that was in your heart is cleansed. And now suddenly all kinds of purity comes out of your mouth where you bless God. But like I said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of God. In the days of Noah, he would preach, but no one repented but his own family. But you know, you know what? Once the door, once the floodwaters came, and once the door was shut, they were ready to repent. They were ready to get right with God at that point. And friend, yeah. Okay, it's, it's time to get right with God, though. Religion doesn't save you. It's only, it's only through Christ. It's only through Jesus Christ. He will save you. You need to re humble yourself as a child and repent. Jesus said, unless you come as a child, yes. you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have to repent. you got to humble yourself before God. As I was saying, in the days of Noah, when the floodwaters came and the ark door shut, that's when they wanted to repent. And so many people want to repent and at the last second they want to live a life of sin and party it up and, and hopefully at the last second that they repent. It's going to be too late at that point. You know, you're going to be so hardened towards the gospel and so hardened towards God that you're going to, not going to want to repent. Or it's going to be too late and that door is going to be closed and you're going to open your eyes. And here we are on the precipice of a new year. We're on the precipice of a new beginning. Today's that day, friend. You want to get right with God? You want to totally change your heart, your life? Put your faith in Him. Put your faith in Christ. Truly make it right with God, friend. He died on the cross for you to save you from your sin. Are you living for Him? Are you walking with Him? Or are you living in sin? Are you walking in the world? It's today's the day to walk with Him. To, tru to truly transform your heart and your life through the power of God. How do I know? If I'm walking with the Lord, Jesus said, "You'll know them by their fruit. By the fruit, you'll get it. You'll know them." What, what do I mean? So, if you go look at an apple tree, it's not going to have oranges. If you go look at an orange tree, it's not going to have peaches. If you look at a peach tree, it's not going to have apples. If you look at a Christian, he's going to have godly fruit, the fruit of the spirit, the, the the godliness, the love, the peace, the joy, all those fruits of the spirit, friend. Is that in your life? Are you walking with God? Friend, if, if you have all kinds of cursing and bitterness flowing out of your mouth, you don't have the Spirit of God in you. I've, I've heard so many people that claim Christ and we have a conversation with them and suddenly all kinds of foul, foul uh, words come out of their yeah. mouth. It's an indication that they don't have Christ in their life. It's an indication that their heart is hardened and darkened. That they've, they've exchanged the true God of the Bible with a false idol, a false God. You're not serving as the God of the Bible. Is it David got angry when he heard the story and said, well, that, that rich man should be killed. And then Nathan looked at David and said, you are the man. And then David realized his sin was open before the Lord. Because the Lord, he sees everything. Everything you do in secret. Everything. So you are without excuse, old man. You are yeah, without excuse, old woman. We all stand before God. He knows everything. And I suggest that his countdown clock is coming. Each of us have a countdown clock. We all need to get right with God. We all need to get right with God. Seek the Lord. He may be found. Talk to him now. Get your heart right with God before you see it. Because there's nothing secret that's not going to be revealed. So you might as well confess it to him.